Thank you very much. Uh, welcome here at the Italian Cultural Institute. Thank you to the Institute and for their kind hospitality. And thank you to uh, all of you for being here tonight. Um, this uh, is an event that uh, has been organized by the Embassy of Italy in the United Kingdom, for which I'm, that I'm here representing. And uh, I am Luisa Tondelli, and I'm the scientific attaché at the Italian Embassy. As you, many of you probably already know, we launched the last month a, a new uh, series of uh, conference named Science for Society, in which we are uh, uh, debating scientific and technological uh, topics with the help of distinguished experts from both Italian and uh, British institutions. And uh, the effort is always to present uh, uh, recent results or findings uh, in this case, also uh, um, evidence from the past, because we have two experts from uh, um, two experts on history of science, uh, but with a focus on the uh, application of these findings and results on uh, uh, everyday life, uh, also uh, taking into account of the uh, impact they can have on society and also on future generations as well. So it's really, uh, I'm really honored to uh, present you the two distinguished speakers. Uh, Professor Matthew Landros on my left from, is a supernumerary fellow at Warson College. He's professor of history of science at the Faculty of History at the University of Oxford. He has published books and dozens of essay on Leonardo da Vinci, including Leonardo da Vinci, 500 years on, in 2018. Uh, strumenti e meccanismi, Leonardo e l'arte dell'ingegneria, disegni di Leonardo al codice atlantico, Leonardo da Vinci's giant crossbow, le armi e le macchie da guerra, il dare militare di Leonardo, and the treasures of Leonardo, just to mention the name. And uh, on the right part of the table, Professor Andrea Bernardone from Museo Galileo, the Storia della Scienza di Firenze. He is a researcher and member of curatorial staff at the Institute of the Eastern of Science in Florence. And he has also been, from 2008-2012, research fellow in Eastern of Science at the University of Bergamo in Italy. In 2013, he founded the international group of studies, Artes Meccaniche, for the studies of mechanical philology, which means the reconstruction and historical contextualization of ancient machine and technical process. And then since 2016, he is also a member of the scientific committee of Leonardo Tech, a platform for integrated consultation of Leonardo's manuscripts and relative literary criticism developed in the Museo Galileo itself. He also has been the author of many history of science publications, the curator of section in several important Leonardo exhibitions since 2016, and I understand that they were also very, very busy this year, in which you know we are celebrating the 500 years from the death of Leonardo da Vinci. We will focus, uh, as as it's noted, of course, on science, which is unusual for Leonardo studies, and and as even more unusual engineering. And yet, uh, one of our arguments is uh, generally. Uh, that what Leonardo was very comfortable with, actually, was with engineering and mechanics, uh, because that, that's, uh, that was uh, in, adi in addition to painting, of course. But, uh, but how he expanded his, uh, his knowledge, uh, generally, to, uh, to the other sciences and humanities was through mechanics and engineering, for reasons we'll discuss. And indeed, what's interesting about that uh, for, the, for the reception of Leonardo is that, as we see on this poster on the, on the, on the left up here, uh, that Leonardo was praised even into the 20th century and even now uh, as, as, a, as, as a model, inventor, scientist, and uh, someone who could be looked to for uh, an inspiration to industry, as you see on this poster from, from the exhibition of 1939. So. In the 1934, uh, the studies of Giacomelli and Schneider, dedicated to the flight machine, was exposed also in the Italian exhibition dedicated to the aeronautics. In the wake of this uh, first reconstruction, a systematic study of all the Leonardo da Vinci technology drawings did begin in Milan, coordinated by the engineer Arturo Uccelli. This research, bringing away 
uh, with the collaboration of Polytechnic of Milan and several technicians from industrial and military department, culminated with the construction of about 200 models in a one by one scale, mainly working shown in the so called Leonardesca exhibition in 1939. Uh, the exhibition that covered a whole Leonardo topics, artistic, scientific, and technological aspects. This cultural heaven was strongly influenced by the ideological approach of history to history, uh, with which the Italian fascist regime uh, was claiming Italian genius, uh, presenting Leonardo as a precursor of, of all science and arts. On this occasion, some articles were published in which the, cri the criteria used for the construction of the machine were taken into account in order to give them scientific reliability. The 200 models he, who worldwide, uh, had the worldwide resonance and after the end of the exhibition, a worldwide tour began. The Science Museum in London tried to buy some model of uh, list to have their replicas. Uh, the exhibition was held uh, outside of Italy in the Science and Eastern Museum at the Rockefeller Center in the, sorry, this is the by Leonardo in the 1939 exhibition. Okay, this is the publication in uh, the Illustrated London News in 1939. And, uh, and this is from the New York uh, 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 exhibition. And then uh, the exhibition was moved to Tokyo, where it was set up in the area of the grid of industry. This was the last setup of the exhibition because the journey back to Italy, the ship carrying the models, was bombed and destroyed. All the models, uh, all the Leonardo's models, sink into the ocean. The exhibition of uh, 1929 and even more than 1939 represent important step in Leonardo Engineer Studies. From one hand, the studies carry out. Siamo qui con il professor Bernardoni da Firenze. Ci dica più, eh, per cosa lavora e un po' per, perché è venuto qui a Londra a raccontarci di Leonardo. Allora, io lavoro al Museo Galileo, all'Istituto di Storia della Scienza che si trova dentro il Museo Galileo e sono venuto qui a parlare di Leonardo perché appunto il Museo Galileo è anche sede della Commissione Vinciana portiamo avanti dei progetti appunto di ricerca su Leonardo e l'Istituto Italiano di Cultura mi ha invitato appunto a fare questa, questo incontro. E durante la conferenza abbiamo visto che Leonardo ha veramente fatto tantissimi disegni in vari vari ambiti e sono opere che tutt'oggi utilizziamo quotidianamente. Eh, sì. In che senso? Se ci utilizziamo per lo studio o sono anche di ispirazione per tante sì, cose? Esatto. Infatti cioè Leonardo è diventato anche un'icona della cultura pop poi alla fine, no? cioè, eh ha questi due aspetti e circa da quando sono stati riscoperti i suoi manoscritti, diciamo dalla fine del XVIII secolo, XIX, XX secolo, eh, studiamo per cercare di capirli dal punto di vista scientifico e accademico, allo stesso tempo però si è affermata questa figura. In ogni città del mondo c'è un museo dedicato alle macchine di Leonardo, no? e quindi, di Leonardo Pop, e quindi sì, Leonardo ritorna mh, nella nostra vita quotidiana in molti modi. In molti... Perfetto. E uh, quindi abbiamo visto Leonardo non solo come pittore, ma anche proprio come i suoi disegni. Dov'è che, se volessimo cercarli, appunto, dov'è che potremmo trovarli in Italia o all'estero, i suoi disegni? Mm, I manoscritti di Leonardo sono dispersi un po' in tutto il mondo, mm -hmm. anche qui a Londra ci sono, alla... mm -hmm. British Library, per esempio, c'è un importante manoscritto che è il codice Arundel, che proprio per la meccanica e l'ingegneria di Leonardo è molto importante, ma ancora più famosi sono i disegni di anatomia, tutta la collezione che è proprietà della regina d'Inghilterra, no? che si trova a Windsor, ci sono alcuni disegni ad Oxford, ehm, o altrimenti in Italia, a Milano, alla Biblioteca Ambrosiana, alla Biblioteca Trivulziana, agli Uffizi, a Parigi. Insomma, insomma, un po' in Spagna. Oh, comunque, sì, un po sono comunque. talmente tanti. Sì. Eh sì, sono più di 6.000 fogli manoscritti. Caspita. Che si pensa sia circa un terzo di tutta la sua produzione. Ah, addirittura. Sì. Sì. Grazie mille. Perfetto. Ok, so we are here with... Matthew Landris. Mm -hmm. From? From the University of Oxford. So you were here at the Italian Cultural Institute for a conference about Leonardo's designs and machines. So I want to ask you a little bit about the conference. What did you talk about? 
Uh, we spoke about the mechanics of, uh, Leonardo's interested in me mechanics and machines and useful inventions. So we're looking at him uh, not, not only as, a, as an engineer, but also as someone who thought of nature and his work in very mechanical ways. So we added in uh, an anatomical studies as well as uh, studies of machines and his studies of books, his, his, the way he was writing books and uh, to sort of give a, a more of a complete picture of Leonardo beyond that of just Leonardo the painter. That's great. And how did you, um, I don't know, got interest in Leonardo? Why Leonardo and not others? I, as an undergraduate, I was very interested in Leonardo's drawings and I, I found that I liked the way in which he represented life, lifelike movements and drawings and wanted to study his drawings of water mm -hmm. and turbulence and then looked at how his turbulent studies of water and turbulent studies of air sort of related to each other mm -hmm. and how that how scientists today are sort of interested in that science of turbulence too so then I, I continued looking at that and came to Oxford to study uh, that that very problem That's great. so Leonardo not just as a painter but as something else and a lot more and if we want to find Leonardo's here in the UK where would would we go you would go to the National Gallery and look at the Madonna of the Rocks. It's currently in an exhibition now at the, at the London National Gallery. And you can go to the Victorian Albert Museum where they have the Codex Forester. Yeah. And they sometimes have that on display. And I think this year they have had it on display a bit. Uh, the, the British Museum has the Codex Arundel. You have to make an appointment to see it. Sometimes they have a sheet or two that are, that's out on display, so that's good. Uh, but it's worth seeing. It's a very important book. And, uh, and then, then there's the Chatsworth Gallery, there, there are some, in Oxford's uh, Christchurch Cathedral, mm -hmm. Christchurch uh, College, I should say, they have in their picture gallery some drawings of Leonardo's, and they have uh, in the Ashmolean some small drawings of Leonardo's that are also quite significant. And, uh, and so uh, in, in England, it's a, it's a rich uh, collection of materials, and not to mention, of course, at the Windsor Castle Royal Library, uh, the finest grouping of his uh, presentational drawings of uh, figures, for example, and uh, uh, drawings that have been favored for a long time uh, as his uh, primary anatomical studies are there. And, his, uh, and uh, so anatomical studies, studies of figures, uh, architectural drawings, the map of Imola, mm -hmm. and uh, a really rich collection of several hundred drawings at Windsor Castle. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.